Da qui, eh, da questo momento, ci allontaniamo dal nostro territorio italiano e andiamo a esaminare, a vedere, a conoscere le esperienze spagnole. In modo particolare abbiamo due ospiti, il primo è il professor Pere Sali Martini dell'Osservatorio dei Paesaggi di Catalogna, il quale terrà una relazione in lingua inglese, Managing and Planning the Landscape with the Communities, the Experience of the Landscape Observatory of Catalonia. Lascio a lei la parola. Uh, buongiorno, <laughs> thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to just send my thanks to the organizers. It is an honor to participate in this important event, to meet with all of you and with this excellent work of the colleagues of the Italian and Spanish uh, Landscape uh, Observatories. Mm, I will share my screen. Oh, it fails. Yeah. Do you see my screen? No, we can't see it. Okay, we we'll try again. Sorry. Now? Oh, yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Um, so managing and planning the landscape uh, with the communities is one of the main challenges of the European Landscape Convention. And this has also been one of the objectives uh, we have set ourselves since the beginning of the observatory 15 years ago. And precisely the publication you can see in the screen was realized to mark the 15th anniversary of the Landscape Observatory. And it contains 15 reflections, key concepts, uh, challenges that resonate, that connect with the observatory's objective and task during these 15 years in the raw material and the raw material with which it works, which is the, the landscapes. So I will share, uh, first of all, these reflections, these challenges uh, with you. The first one is journey. Uh, since we start on this uh, amazing journey of 15 uh, years ago, we have been joined by many traveling companions from Catalonia, Spain, around the world, from new universities to a small tall, uh, town hall, local cultural organizations to government, Catalan government and professional sectors. And with this help, we have generated an important body of knowledge about landscape that has reached institutions and society in general and step by step is guiding public policies. So after 15 years, the level zero has been covered, which began in 2005 with the creation of the Landscape Observatory, the approval of the landscape law by the Catalan Parliament. So we know, in other words, in these 15 years, we have led the foundations that are indispensable to take a leap forward and go even further uh, afield. Place. The observatory is a place where the theoretical reflection and practical application come together at the service of public policies. It is located in a lot in this beautiful volcanic landscape that you see on the screen in the north of Catalonia. It is a shared, open, receptive meeting point, midway between civil society, government and academic and professional sectors in all areas related with landscape culture. It's open to new, to emergent places, to what is happening uh, today. A laboratory, why is a laboratory? The laboratory is constantly evolving and redefining itself, applying principles of pluralism and diversity. And it has become an incubator for innovative projects. It is open to creative, imaginative initiative, and it explores and creates new tools and instruments that often go beyond the limitations that inevitably constrain government activity. So it's a place of training and error. Knowledge is fundamental for taking decisions regarding the landscape as both, both as local and national level. It is knowledge that by definition must be holistic 
and course cutting. The observatory generates, shares, and transfers knowledge and methodologies to all the society, inviting participation from all its stakeholders. And it does so in, in the conviction that expert knowledge requires the interchange of plural and diverse inputs from a specialist knowledge to the perception and opinions of the civil, of the civil society, as we did uh, in the landscape catalog that we will see uh, later. And from knowledge to action, the observatory is a space for reflection and action on landscape issues. Its purpose is not merely to provide support for the public policies, but also to perform an educational function and buying society as a whole with knowledge and increasing awareness. So for instance, landscape catalogs, landscape charters, plans, projects, guidelines, symposiums, seminars, etc., have been and still are some of the tools we are using to generate this direct impact. Despite the fact that the Catalan landscape policy uh, is uh, 15 years old, we are only just at the beginning to penetrate the landscape into public and political debate. So the task of raising people awareness ahead is immense. We could say that the observatory acts as a mirror of the landscape. Through its action, the observatory shows like a mirror, a landscape through a state of health, detecting emerging dynamics and providing input for future agendas. The next three concepts uh, are absolutely crucial. Dialogue, the daily dialogue that contemporary societies have with their everyday landscapes demands the continuous exchange of interdisciplinary methodologies. And also a spaces for sharing ideas, cooperation and consensus between government and civil society and between the public and the private spheres putting in place new forms of participative democracy in territorial management. So we will see some examples uh, later that, try, that the Landscape Observatory tries to promote these new forms of participatory democracy in territorial management and, and planning. Community. Without community, there is no landscape. We live in a community and it's with community that we share our perceptions and experiences of the landscape. That is why the landscape provides such an excellent tool for addressing the complexity of territorial management and organization collectively. As community, we cannot be indifferent to those landscape values that may help us transition to a new models of collective values, such as cohesion, identity, diversity, solidarity, cooperation, common good, integration, uh, tradition, innovation, beauty. And breaches. Integrated visions of the landscape have the capacity to build political, cultural, economic breaches between broad sectors of the society and find these middle grounds and areas are conscious between often opposing visions. The aim is to promote a quality landscape that has positive effects on people's well-being, generates economic opportunities, and invigorates the territory with both social and cultural. Another function of the Landscape Observatory is the creation of this atmosphere, these spaces of sharing diverse constructing experiences and sociabilities. Um, so building landscape implies creating synergies, complicities, and interdependencies from a sense of proximity and everyday experience, seminars, congresses, training to local administration, as we have seen in, in the other, uh, the, the last uh, prese pre presentations. One of our main efforts during these 15 years has been the identification of values, because values, because landscape treasure an, an extraordinary diversity of values, natural, aesthetic, historic, social, symbolic, productive. These values are acknowledged both by the scientific community and by the public. And some of them are emerging as enormously important for addressing the challenges and uncertainties that of today's world, such as climate change, forced migration, the pandemia, etc. Values is close linked to emotion. The landscape can generate 
individual emotions, and at the same time be a depository of a scientifically recognized and, social, and socially agreed values. Huh? This landscape is full of meanings. It summons memories, awakens emotions that have a direct impact on our well-being and health. So that's why in our methodologies and work, the, land, the observatory has always included human societies, emotion and effective dimension in their relationship with the landscapes, considering inseparable from the physical and material dimensions. Values and emotions led us directly to the idea of gazes. The landscape is the result of the confluence between different gazes, perceptions, interpretations and sensibilities. Every one of these gazes is needed to understand landscape logic and idiosyncrasy and the, uh, to ensure the adequate management as remind us the European Landscape Convention which celebrates 10 years, 10, 20 years, 10, 10 days ago. And the last two reflections about these 15 years are colors because blending a few primary colors in different proportions give an extraordinary range of complementary colors. And the, and the observatory is a primary color, a space in which extremely diverse sensibilities converge, interacting to generate new projects and new relational frameworks. And finally, edge. The observatory is at the interface between science and management. In the same way, landscapes are thresholds between different territorial and sometimes mental realities. And to act on these fringes, we need to find transitional spaces, the edges between their time and spaces and scales, and understand their social and symbolic uh, references. So I have just briefly presented to you some of these reflections, challenges connected with the activity of the observatory over the last 15 years, and the permanently inspired by the need to work together with the communities in its territory. And now I will show you in a nutshell, a short, short selection of initiatives promoted by the Landscape Observatory, or in which the Landscape Observatory is involved in one way or another, and that they are all impregnated with these 15 concepts, ideas, challenges. The aim is not to go in deep in each project, but to highlight the diversity of initiatives that an observatory can develop in order to implement the European Landscape Convention. Let us start with the landscape catalogs. Uh, as I mentioned before, landscape knowledge is fundamental to take landscape decisions, and landscape catalogs are the main tool for these purposes. So landscape catalogs are a planning instrument used for increasing knowledge and for introduce landscape quality objectives into urban and regional planning, as well as sectorial policies with the cooperation of the stakeholders. And they are also a very powerful instrument for raising people awareness of the importance of landscape diversity. Landscape catalogs identify Latin and Latin values given by the population, by the local stakeholders and the general public. And also these landscape catalogs and the definition of the landscape quality objective mark a turning point in landscape knowledge and management due to both their ability to document and guide public policies and their potential to educate and raise public awareness. One of the most first and most significant results of the landscape catalogs is the identification of 134 landscape units, or simply landscapes in this scale, which are understood as areas that share the same character recognized by the population. These landscape units are important because they constitute basic territorial units to which a specific landscape policies are applied. But more than new political administrative entities from which to rethink the government of the country, these landscape units are spaces of life, are realities with collective memories, precisely because they are recognized by the population. So we need to think on this map as more than just an exercise in cartography, or more, more than just an exercise for the comprehension and description of particular landscapes, but also as an area for management, planning and action to apply initiative, local strategies or implement 
landscape directive and also is a very good tool for educational uh, activities. The knowledge generated by the catalogs can also be applied in different sectorial areas in line with the community of a particular place. Let's look at this example, which has to do with uh, roads. We start uh, working in 2019, last year, with the Directorate General of Tourism and the Directorate General of Mobility to jointly explore the potential of the Catalan's road network for discovering the diversity of our landscapes and from the idea that roads are key infrastructure for the perception and enjoyment of landscapes. They generate diverse tourist and leisure experience and they can be as instrument for the service of culture, local development and the activation of the heritage as well. So now the, the, the Director General of Mobility is currently promoting this pilot project based on the objective of this document we prepared last year. And last May, the observatory organized a meeting with the main cultural, tourist, cultural and tourist actors in this area in order to work together in this, in this pilot project to define the final route, objective, actions, synergies, etc. They know these people from the territory, the local people, they know more about this, about its territory, about the, its values, its needs than anyone else. So since that time, we have been working together. This is an example of these bridges that we often build uh, between administration, professionals and the stakeholders eh, in a particular uh, territory. Landscape is generating increasing local interest and the current health crisis is reinforcing this idea. The map of the, this map of the cross-border landscape plan of La Sardanya is a good example of the observatory's role in helping to rethink regions on the basis of the landscape. At the same time, when local authorities are seeking imaginative and alternative formula for planning and management while encouraging the creation of economic opportunities. It, this is a joint action by the, local, the Landscape Observatory in different institutions of these cross-border regions. So this is a collective map. This result is a, the result is a collective map as a result of the implication of participation of the actors and the uh, 36 municipalities of both sides of the border. So the experiment is also constantly raising new questions. How can social players and economic sectors be involved in management and improving landscape that is divided by a national border, for instance. This is another relevant example of the accompaniment we provide to communities that I don't have the time to explain in detail now. This is a territory which as a reaction to a project which impacted on one of its most symbolic landscapes, right, these mountains, has become aware of the values of its agricultural ordinary landscape and believe that its um, everyday landscape should uh, be at the center of its future development. So the process culminated with some years ago in an UNESCO bottom-up candidacy with the particularity that this candidacy is not an end in itself. It is, this candidacy is a tool for the priority community to commit to its present and future. So Landscape Observatory helps and collaborates in this process of 10, 10 years. Uh, you are, uh, there are two minutes left. Yes. Uh, this is another example. We are now collaborating with the government of Andorra in the preparation of the national landscape uh, strategy. And we are doing, building this strategy collectively with the government, the municipalities and the social agents. And uh, this participatory approach encourages a great recognition of the values and dynamic of the Andorran landscapes and a growing assumption of co-responsibility by all the, well, all the, all the agents. And we are in the middle of the, of the road. And finally, this is a, a project of collaborative local landscape management. It's a collaborative database of drying stone constructions that allow anyone to enter and consult relevant, this relevant information. In nine years of history, Wikipedia has created an inventory of 24,000 constructions. 
The, this inventory is made by the civil society, volunteers, 400 volunteers, and now the government, Ministry of Land, Sustainability, Culture, Agriculture, they are using this relevant uh, information. And uh, finally, a landscape policy cannot be efficient without the awareness and the change of information. And here I would like to highlight this archive of images. It is a collaborative archive open to the public with the aim of crossing and sharing very diverse views of the landscape from professionals, from technicians, from students, amateurs, photographers, etc. And I'm coming to the end, 15 years after the landscape law, now it's a good time to take a stock. It is time to make a leap forward in our landscape policy to make it more transversal, pragmatic, designated for action, and to reinforce public-private partnerships and cooperation, and to ensure that we are better orientated towards our current challenges. And which are these challenges? So this is a list of these challenges, but I would like to highlight health, social cohesion, the, the growing role of landscape in climate uh, as an indicator or response to climate emergency or the participatory uh, democracy. Uh, you will find more information about these uh, questions on the observatory website. Thank you for your attention.